left a little bit early because I've got a few more to go. That's alright. That's fine. Alright. Alright, so this is effective social media strategies. I'm Jai Gibson, I'm a Collins and Projects Manager for Outdoor New Zealand. Um, just say thanks to Skills Active for hosting this. Um, you know, we didn't pay for this one, um, so we, you know, we, we're a charity and we save money, so we couldn't do this without support of people like Skills Active. Um, so, first bit about me I was uh, born and raised in the Scottish Highlands, raised by wolves, uh, where uh, outdoor recreation was a way of life. Living in the outdoors is more of a way of life rather than a recreational activity. So, I grew up sort of you know, hunting, fishing, skiing, and whatnot, but it's a matter of just getting around the farm. You know, that's a typical winter. So. Um, I cut my teeth in, in designing marketing campaigns for our house films and foreign language films in, in London. I uh, did that for five years. Um, it was fun, but the, the people were heady and uh, pretentious, and uh, not, not the kind of people I'm used to hanging out with. Uh, after five years, I, I got pretty disillusioned and thought, you know, I don't, really, I don't really know what I want to do. So I, um, a friend told me that there was uh, great snowboarding in New Zealand, and uh, so I came to New Zealand to go snowboarding. And I spent a season in Queenstown, and that's taken in the Reese Valley. Uh, it's uh, the Invincibles ski field, which is a privately owned ski field. Uh, it's owned by Dark Stables, um, and uh, you can only get up there by helicopter or by walking. We, we actually took a helicopter up and ran us down, me and a bunch of mates. We stayed up there in that park. It was awesome. It was fantastic. That is actually purposeful movement. You know, that's not out of control. That was, that's, that's meant. <laughs> I landed that here. Um, so I, I spent um, another year and a half going around New Zealand because I just I was amazed by just the, what the outdoors had to offer here. So after a year and a half of doing sampling by everything I could, um, some friends of mine here that I made suggested that we start a company. Um, and I decided to do that and stay. And so we set up Gifted uh, Unlimited. Queenstown, and that was a, actually a snowboard clothing label, but we we actually, uh, one of our catchphrases was that uh, we create random acts of fabric, because we just did whatever, you know, suited us at the time. So we did all kinds of stuff, but in the end, um, the, the, the industry is really competitive um, with the advent of the internet sales and, and whatnot, we find it really increasingly competitive. So, we, we did lots of other things, like we ran some events. And this is the Queenstown Big Air. That's it at night. You see the huge run. It was heaps of fun. We did that for five years. Um, come in, come in. Is this the right one for me? This is, this is social media? Yeah. 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 Take a seat. Um, a little bit of dance. That's all right. Um, so, this, so we ran these, these events. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite ashamed to say that uh, the safety aspect probably not up to to, to scratch as far as the guards are they were concerned. So I, I'll we'll skip over the details of that. Um, but in 2004, um, I uh, started a newspaper in New York with some friends. Uh, it's called the Epoch Times, um, and I spent quite a lot of my time traveling around the world, helping set up that. That's got 17 editions worldwide now. Um, I, in the end, I didn't want to leave New Zealand, so I did all my work based from New Zealand. But, um, in the end, they, they managed to convince me to move to Manhattan in 2009, and I, I, I spent uh, the last uh, two years there uh, as the marketing director for the newspaper. Um, and then the earthquakes happened, and my wife came here because our family were in Christchurch. Um, and then the second earthquake happened, and she said, "Oh, I'm not coming back." So I thought, oh, well, that's a good excuse to move back to New Zealand because I had enough of a big city. And Manhattan was great, but I just I love New Zealand so much. So um, I came back here, and um, that's when I came across this job, communications and projects manager for Outdoor New Zealand. Now, when I, when I told my brother this that I was moving back to New Zealand, he he laughed. He said, you know, communications and projects manager for Outdoor New Zealand sounds like you sit in a chair in a field, chatting orders of people, <laughs> and. Um, He's, he's a submarine pilot, and so he has a lot of downtime, unattended. Um, so he's, 
he, he spends a lot of time on the internet posting humiliating photos of me. Um, so, he posted this, I thought it was quite funny. Okay, it got a giggle. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, be good to go around you guys. Um, and I'll start with Lance, because I'm with Lance. And if you could just tell me your name, what org you work for, your position, and what networks, what social networks your organization is on, and why you're here and what you to get out of this session. Okay. Uh, my name is Lance Tamuri, I'm an acting comms advisor for Skills Equity. Um, we've only just launched Facebook this month, that's the only um, social network um, that we have at the moment. We are currently possibly looking at some others, uh, Maitland and um, maybe Pinterest, um, yeah, that's about it. So I'm here to um, basically learn as much as I can. We, we launched Facebook more as a communication tool than anything. So. I'm Christina Gilmart, and I'm from Service IQ, and I'm in marketing and events. Most of I've spoken to you before, a few others, New Zealand um, conference. It's, um, previously, Service IQ used to be a triple tier. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. And um, we've got Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Well, I'm starting with Pinterest, but um, because Service IQ is part of an organization, um, we just haven't had a lot of time, and I do want to see what, I just haven't had time to get on Pinterest and see what I can do on there. But um, in LinkedIn, but, um, but Facebook, I really enjoy it. Um, and I don't like Twitter. Um, my name is Matthew Walsh, I'm from Great Wellington Regional Council. Um, I work in the Parks Department doing community events and projects, so uh, we're sort of currently on Facebook and Twitter. That's not used that well. Um, I'm just sort of here to try and yeah, figure out how to use it better and also to help get some information because we want to try and encourage all our community groups to sort of have presence in the social, social media as well. Sorry, I didn't recommend you. Right, uh, yeah, take a seat. Thank you. We'll jump back to you, but we're just introducing each other. Right okay, now, so. sorry, I'm late. That's all right, that's okay. So, um, do you want to just say your name, your organization, yeah, what, network, sure. what social networks your organization is on, and what you want to get out of the session? Okay, sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Nicola Maycroft. I'm a um, sales and marketing manager for the Salvation Army Blue Mountain Event. Centre in the Tongariro National Park. Um, currently, our social media channels are Facebook predominantly, Twitter, um, Tumblr, Instagram, all those little add ons that I see every week coming up. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. We've, we've seen a really good um, increase in sales through social media, so I find it really important for, for the Regional Centre. That's good. Uh, Norm Brown from Mohawk Arctic, which is between Nike and Wellington. Not really. Thank you, Captain. Sorry. I'll stay by the five. Um, other than the website, we do Facebook, sort of. But it's working a lot. Um, you'll be able to tell me, I suppose, if you look at it. Yeah. Um, then we use Twitter, which you get some feedback through to the website because it announces when we've got specific trips on. That's good. And it's a good thing if people can just see the trips over the time. That's good, yeah. Um, whether that happened by accident, I don't know. Um, websites like that, uh, well, posted, we've got next into um, November, which doesn't do as much good. Um, twice, you just saved it now. Disappeared from the base of the desert again and he was trying to rebuild it while he was doing um, relief work over in Uganda, so it just hadn't come back to the ground. Um, we went on the, I picked on Facebook as a when the website went down because we just lost the uh, presence. Yeah. Google Analytics just dropped out the face of the earth. So, right. Um, that's basically what we started and it, it seems to be alright, I think. But I right. haven't had a comment about it. Good. Uh, my name is Kurt Sharp, uh, I'm in conservation and we've just recently started.
uh, social media team, the two of us. Um, and currently we're not really on social media as an organisation, but we use a few channels. We have a spokesperson for Constellation, who is Sir Robert Cutter um, We run uh, Great Walks promotions through there, and we also connect with our partners that we work with in other countries. We do like this, my team, Genesis Engine. Um, so that's my social media handle on Twitter. Uh, that's Onzies, and you can find Onzies myself on all these networks. Um, these these are the these are the main networks that you need to be on um, in the first instance, I would say. Um, Pinterest and Instagram and all these things are great, but they're not going to get you a return for business or communications as much as they are on these. Um, you really need to work off these first. Um, there's very little point in being on Instagram if you're not on Twitter. Uh, almost no point at all. Um, this one is um, LinkedIn. How many people have a LinkedIn profile? That's great. That's really good because it's been I've been around the country and uh, the amount of people that are on well, that are not on LinkedIn is quite worrying. So it's because LinkedIn is really important. Um, so um, some people have. Uh, I have, you know, I have to go through a wide range of uh, levels of skill and whatnot, and so I start right at the beginning, but I'll, I'll skip through a lot of this. But some people are saying, why should I be on Facebook? And I say, well, it's that figure there. You know, that's, that's half the population of New Zealand on Facebook. You know, if, you're, if you're not on Facebook, you're, you're irrelevant, really. Um, and that's going to become more and more true as, as time goes on. Um, the other reason is, is that a recent study uh, by uh, Syncaps, a social media firm in America. They used a, a, a research firm called Hotspex. Um, and they determined that on average, um, a brand, uh, a fan is worth 174 US dollars to a brand in terms of actual, over, this, over their lifetime in actual uh, sales or you know, income. Um, that's, that would change from brand to brand. Uh, depends on, you know, Obviously, if you're selling widgets for 50 cents, it, the value is going to be less than if you're selling, you know, watches for ten thousand dollars. So the, the average brand um, value is just different. Then you can see the you know, Zara their average is uh, 405, whereas Coca-Cola is 70 over the lifetime of a, a customer, and that's purely through social media. Um, and this is, you know, this is driven through uh, a lot of, you know, uh, important research. Um, and there's more and more research like this coming out now, where you can um, look, you know, look at the return on your investment, the ROI. It's easier to justify to your, to, you know, your superiors as to why you should be on social media. Um, with with everything on this um, in this workshop, uh, in this talk, I'll email it to everyone at the end, uh, probably, at, probably at the end of this week. All of the links, everything, all the resources and whatnot. So um, yeah, so that'll be available to you. Um, so this is a little, just sort of a little table that sort of measures uh, the difference between brand fans and non-fans. Um, on you know, on and off Facebook, and you can see that the, the measure of you know, the, the importance and whatnot is quite high. Um, and that they, you know, that people actually use Facebook for connecting with brands, for researching, um, you know, what products and services they want to use. Um, so. When I, you know, when I talk about social networks and the problems that people have with social networks, the challenges they have, I, I like to talk about um, a room full of people. You know, it's it's about social social media marketing or whatnot. It's it's about networks of people. That's what it comes down to. So it's it's like whenever you you're imagining a situation on your Twitter or on Facebook or whatever, imagine a room of people, and that room of people is all of the people that have liked your page, or that follow you on Twitter, or that subscribe to your YouTube channel. And so how you would react in any given situation is how you would react at that party. So at that party, if you've got you know, a few hundred people there, and, you, and all you do is say, hey, here's this product, uh, here's this service, here's this desk, and if you're just constantly pushing out um, your agenda without any sort of you know, interesting stuff going around, people are going to get bored of the party and they're going to leave. 
So, you, so the, one of the rules we use is the 80-20 um, rule. So at least, so, so you want to keep the uh, amount of product pushing and sales down to 20% of, of your overall posts. So 80% of the posts that you put out there need to be relevant and interesting information. Um, so you need to be surrounding the subject, uh, not necessarily just pushing something you're trying to, you're trying to sell. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a good analogy that I'll always come back to. So it's, it's your party, your, so just remember, it's your party, your room of little people, how, you know, whenever you, whenever you think of a challenge, oh, I, I don't know what to do in this situation, you literally visualize a, a room with all those people and how would you interface with that, you know? Um, things like, um, you know, at a party, if you just stand there and just read out a speech, you know, that's going to bore everyone into tears. But if you show slideshows and photos, it gets a bit more interesting. If you show video, it's even more interesting. And that's proven in statistics. So uh, if you post a post purely to text, it, you know, you might, you might get some hit, hits if it's interesting. But if you post a photo with that, with that text, you get 40% more hits. If you post a video, you get 60% more uh, engagement and hits than you would with just an all the text. So, so photo and video is really important. And at this point, I'm, I'd like to ask who, who's who's got a smartphone here? Okay. So, the first thing you need to do if you're serious about social media is get a smartphone. If you want, if you want to, um, you, if you want to win with the social media in your business or organization, you can't do it without smartphones. And I'll explain a bit more about that later. It's mobile is the future. Well, mo well, mobile isn't the future, it's now. And if you don't have a smartphone, you're losing that. And you can get them for a couple of hundred bucks. That will do the job that you need. So, you know, they're not a huge investment, but they are really an important one. Okay, I'll just go over um, what uh, ONS does with its social media and the strategies we're using at the moment. So, ONS, ONS um, hasn't been using social media that long either, um, just a little over a year. Um, whereas I've probably been using social media for about 14 years. I was, I was actually um, back in 2000, I started a social network before we even knew it was a social network um, with some friends in London. We call it contactdetails.com, and we, it was the most awkward product that you know, like, what is this? It's a self updating address book, and people were just like, what? And, uh, we, you know, other, we had competitors like Plaxo and Beagle. Beagle's huge now, Plaxo's still a self updating dress book. And it's just a rotten product. And I can't believe they managed to stay alive so long. But we used to see those guys at conferences all the time. Anyway, anyway. Um, so social media is, um, so on social media is growing, but this is the current strategy we use, that, that we use now. And it'd be the current strategy that you would use if you were just in your sort of startup phase. Once you get to the the point where you're engaging regularly, the, the strategy changes quite differently. And so what I've found over the course of these workshops all around the country is, is that our sector is pretty it's fairly far behind I feel. I feel like you know they're just at just at the growing stage. It does sound like I'm quite happy to hear it sounds like quite a few of you here are, are, are kind of closer to this end, which is nice, which is good. Um, around the country it's, it's you know it's people are being going, you know this is Twitter for teenage girls, you know, and like that. That's tweens, not twins. Um, so anyway, I'll talk a little bit. This is a this is a social Sprite, Sprite social that we use. Um, it's a social media uh, management dashboard. Now there's heaps of these. There's you know a whole bunch of services that you can use. There's similar. There's TweetDeck. There's Hootsuite. There's you know there's uh, Buffer. There's a bunch, and I'll give you links to all of those. Um, uh, at the end, when I send this presentation out, but I'll talk a little bit more about some others that support New Zealand news, for example. So I'm just going to show you what we do in terms of managing. So we have a. I'm just going to do because it's open. So one of the things, one of the one of the things that you saw there was the consistency. We try to do half an hour to an hour a day of um, of social media activity. But that you know that might sound a lot for some people. You know that's that's a significant amount of time. But we do use this that helps us um, look like we're much more active than we actually are. Um, we use automation. Um, so you could spend an hour to uh, two hours, one one day a week or over a weekend, 
and actually make this work for you the entire week um, by using uh, automation and scheduling processes. So these, so these, um, so, so uh, these social media dashboards, they, um, they do all kinds of things. I'll quickly go over them. Um, so you, obviously you've got your demographics. So if you, if you have Google Analytics, it's quite similar to that. But this is not your website, this is your social media. Now Google Analytics does do social media now. It does have social media dashboards. But Google Analytics is a very um, you know, complex tool and it, it's, not, it's not as straightforward as this. You know, this is very much plug and play. So you can see what, um, what, you know, what age and the sort of demographics, you can see what the engagement is, it's pretty low at the moment, usually we're, we're up here, um, so that's a 67 out of 100. Um, so you can, you know, you've got, uh, feeds is one of the main things that you've got that's very useful and we'll talk about RSS feeds, Twitter feeds and all of that and how, that will, um, how that's going to help you all the way. Um, reports is really good. Um, so this, they're very graphical um, and sort of easy to look at. You can customize them through through dates and whatnot. You can see how many impressions you've had over across all of your social media, whether things are going up and down. You can look at the virality of um, certain tweets and articles. You can actually look at what um, you can actually look at which articles are getting most uh, traction. So you can really look at that. Actually look here at uh, down, keep down. You can see it measures the engagement level. And you'll see that almost all of the ones that have any kind of traction are photos at least in the videos. Um, so it's really useful and it's very, very cheap. You know, for if you're a non-profit organization, all of these will offer you 50% off. Um, they don't tell you. They don't tell you that. They don't advertise it. But if you ask, you say, "I'm a non-profit. Here's my, here's my char charity certificate or what non-profit. You know, prove who you are." They'll they'll block fifty off. We spend nine dollars US a month on this for two people, which is really cheap. So that that kind of level of automation um, service is, is peanuts. You know, but the, you can go all the way up. You know, you can go up to like three hundred dollars a month, and you can have you know fifty users and some crazy analytics. But um, so all of them offer a free um, get started kind of trial as well. One user, you have very limited use. But once you've figured out that, that you like the interface, it's you know it's not a huge leap to buy into the first plan. So there's there's a lot of things that they can do, um, and one of the main things about is, is automation and scheduling, um, which is possible through uh, RSS feeds and linking into the feeds of you know, the, the, these are all the Twitter um, people that we follow, the Outdoors New Zealand follows. This is my uh, feed on LinkedIn, and these are all the people that I'm connected with and, and, and follow them recently. Um, right, and the RSS uh, feeds. Now, uh, who's, does it, has everyone heard of RSS? Yes, a bit half and half. All right, so RSS is, stands for really simple syndication. Um, and, what, and, and basically, where you see this, see this uh, here, this it's kind of sonar. Wherever you see that, that means that you can subscribe to a feed. And so, instead of having to go to that website every single day, and you know, looking at the news section and refreshing it and logging in or whatever, um, if you have an RSS reader, which is a piece of software, which can either be downloaded or can be online, um, you can subscribe to a uh, an RSS reader online, and you subscribe to these to these news feeds, so you can go to stuff, and you can say, I want to subscribe to the business RSS feed, and so you'll just get all of the business articles as they come. Now, there's, there's you know there's so many ways that you can get uh, feeds delivered to you. You can get them delivered to your mobile phone um, through through readers. I have one called Flipboard, which is really nice. You can just sort of flip through it. Um, and read it like a magazine. Um, stuff, stuff is pretty good for, uh, but you can see here that we're, these are all the sort of um, feeds that we're subscribed to. We've got subscribed to Google Alerts feeds, 
So we've created feeds through saved searches on Google, and so we, we have a feed you know, for certain keywords, so value proposition plus outdoors, um, social development plus outdoors. So these are all um, sort of alerts that are fed. So the Google's searching the internet for those key phrases, and it's delivering it through an RSS feed in here. And so this is kind of like curated content. So we're not constantly going to stuff, we're not constantly going to outside the magazine, we're not constantly going to all these you know, thousands of websites that we can go to. We've chosen the best ones that we like. We subscribe to their RSS feed. And every day we check through this. And we look and we say, all right, well, that looks like a really interesting <laughs> that, so that looks like a, an interesting article. So we think that's really relevant to the outdoors. So we share. Um, so, <laughs> so this is one of the beautiful things of, uh, of, of Sprout, is that when you find something in your feed that you think is really interesting, you, all of the social networks that you've plugged, that you've added to the social media dashboard, you can you can send out to all at once. So we've got ONS Twitter, the World Outdoor Summit Twitter, my LinkedIn, your site's LinkedIn, Outdoors New Zealand's Facebook page, and World Outdoor's Facebook page. And we can, with a touch of a button, we can send out a message to all of those. We can customize it highly. You can, you know, you've got, it tells you how many characters you've got left over here. You can uh, choose the image. If there's no image, you can add one from a URL, like that. Um, so you just have to find the URL where the image is at. You can even upload images if you want. And this is the, this is the, this is the money thing. It's that you can choose, choose what dates you want these to go out. You can say, I want that to go out at 1 p.m. on the 6th there, or at the end on the 8th, you know, whatever. And so the beauty is, is that you can sit there on a Sunday in front of the TV or whatever, trolling through your RSS feeds and set up 20 tweets for the following week. So you don't have, you know, you're not, you can, you can be out, you know, kayaking in the water. You can, you can be doing, you know, leading a guide. You can be running a, you know, running an outdoor center and still have your social media going. Um, so you can do a lot of this, you know, at, you know, any time you want, and you can schedule. You can also set up a queue. Where, um, so the queue uh, sets it up, you know, queue content as a grants web, so you just go add this to queue and then it will automatically get sent out uh, at a certain time. So you can, you can also do it that way. And if you have a smart game smartphone, you have this app on your smartphone, you just click add that to the queue and it goes out. So there's lots of automation. Um, but it also, it, you know, for a lot of it, it's all built around RSS feeds. You really need, they're, they're, they're really easy to get your head around. With, it, with anything like this, you know, if you have any problems sort of getting your head around what that means or how to do it, just go to YouTube and Google how to subscribe to an RSS feed or how to do this. And that's the beauty of YouTube. It's, it's, it's a brilliant teacher. It's got tutorials for Africa on everything that you can do. And it shows, you know, someone doing it on screen in front of you. Okay, so, but the, one of the other things that it does is, you know, it's truly automatic publishing. And we use it a lot. So these are the RSS feeds. These four are RSS feeds of our website. Right, so uh, top one is the news feed. Right, this one. Um, so if you go here and you go to Outdoors News, and it's... And you can see there, but subscribe to news, subscribe to news feed. And you, know, you can also see up here some some handle up here. So every time we create an article on the website, um, it will automatically get picked up by this software, uh, by the publisher, and it will get tweeted out or sent to Facebook, whatever you choose, automatically. All right. So you so you you're doing one action with multiple results, and that's what the beauty of this software is. It does a lot of it. Um, and it, we said we don't want any more than one per hour going out. But you can set your frequency, um, you know, as infrequent or as frequent as you like. Um, you don't want to get too crazy. You don't want to bombard people. 
So you have to think about all of the other sources of, of the information that you're sending out. This, your 80% of your staff, you know, you've got to think of how much of that is, is um, getting out to a lot. So we have um, an RS, we've subscribed to our, our own media releases RSS feed, and our job listing, um, our job listing feed. So every time on our job board, every time anyone puts a job out, that automatically gets tweeted out to our um, to our channels. So people get a tweet, oh, new job online, check that out. Um, same with our events. So we have an event listing board and the same thing. And um, event finder. Um, so event finder is, is a fantastic resource for finding relevant events. And, and in fact, you saw there in our feeds quite a few up there. So these are this is an event finder. So it's so what we're we're um, subscribed to the adventure and extreme events. And so every time there's an adventure and extreme event, we'll tweet that out because that's part of our 80% might be interesting to our and interesting to our audience, to our to the people in our party. They might want to see know about this mountain biking event or the the quarries, the Sitar adventure. So they they'll get shared out to our network automatically through the software. Maximum once an hour. Again, this is oh, this is all possible with with RSS feeds. So um, you know the possibilities are endless. They're really you know finding an RSS feed, what you can do, and you set that all up, and that you know that could be generating heaps of content for you over the weeks, and you're not doing a single thing. Um, but you just have to be very careful about how you set it up. With social media, it's not a set it and forget it, but it, it you know it's it, you know, to, to, to a degree it is, but you know, it's the setting up your social media correctly will save you a lot of heartache in the future. Um, so that's so that's what we use. There are lots of other softwares out there, cloud softwares that do the same thing, and I show another example later on. Um, by the way, feel free to ask questions, you can interject, whatever. At, you know, we don't have to wait until the end if there's if there's something burning. Or if you want to wait to the end and we can discuss an issue that's relevant to you, just write it down and we'll, we'll visit it at the end. Okay, so um, so going back to so automation, I talked about automation, and the other thing I talked about is building a, an organic audience. Now, what does that mean? That means um, like I said, Outdoors New Zealand has only been going for just you know over a year in terms of social media. And we're beginning, and we got, we've got over 500 Twitter followers, we've got nearly 300 Facebook followers. Um, and that, you know, take, building that audience takes time. So again, going back to your party, right? It's your party. You want people in, in the room that you relate to, that are, are interested in what you've got to say. So, you know, it, it is tempting to go out there and get 10,000 followers by buying them or whatever. That's there's a lot of services out there. You know, get 10,000 fans. You know, for you know, 20 bucks or whatever it is. But that's that's 10,000 people you invite to your party who may not even want to be there. You know, who who you don't want there, and and you know there'll be a lot of clutter. So again, think of that party, the people in that room. Um, you know, it may be attractive to advertisers or or whatever in the in the short term. But in the long term, you're not going to get any return because these people are, you know, you know, they're 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 a 12 year old in, in India who's, you know, doing this for a living, clicking on likes. You know, that that's that's the harsh reality of it. Some of them, some of it's completely automated. Um, there's a lot of controversy in the news at the moment about you know um, celebrities buying followers and uh, they, they, you know these these services they create Twitter accounts um, automatically. They've managed to circumvent all of the you know, are you a human thing? And they create Twitter accounts uh, automatically and follow the celebrities for a price. That's you know, obviously not a great idea. Um, and I talk about engaging, and I talk about engaging online and, and offline. So how do you engage your audience online, um, but also how do you engage um, your you know, people in the out to get into the outdoors to actually recreate using this technology. So I talk a little bit about that more as we go on. Um, but engaging online, depending on what you want to do, 
And one of the one of the good ways of engaging is that, that we use is that, for example, for the World Outdoors Summit, we'll we'll go onto other people's Facebook pages and find um, articles that are relevant to the theme of a uh, World Outdoors Summit. So the value of the outdoors is to society is the theme. So when there's any sort of research sort of describing the value of um, you know of recreational activities, the health or whatever, we'll we'll join that conversation. So we'll post about that. And we'll say, hey, did you know that the World Outdoor Summit is is actually based on this theme? And so, you know, it's not we, we try and add to the conversation and make it, you know, try and comment, try and add value. Don't just spam someone by going, hey, here's my event. You know, you might like it. You know, you, you've got a, it's a conversation. You you wouldn't like literally throw a product at someone in the crowd at your party and go, hey, this is you like this. You know, that's kind of what you're doing. You're, you're saying, hey. Hey, this, you might find this interesting when you've got to the agenda. Again, think about the think about the, uh, the party analogy. So I'm quickly going to go through some trends in social media that are really important. Um, Semi-guaranteed engagement, the death of the viral, uh, rich media content. Uh, mobile is, is something I push quite a lot and with good reason. And offline, offline events becoming being pushed as online events. And I pick on Doc a little bit, I have to, I have to say, sorry about that in, in advance. I <laughs> <laughs> Semi-guaranteed engagement, I mean, th there's actually two things to this. Um, you know, Facebook is more and more, um, you know, it's, it's becoming harder to get cut through on news feeds with Facebook. And so, you know, you're having to spend a little bit of money to get some, um, to get some eyeballs. Um, it's called semi-guaranteed engagement. So if you pay a little bit of money, it means your post will get is guaranteed to be seen by a certain audience, and that's different from that's different from advertising, right? That semi guaranteed engagement is is actually uh, your your activity. You can promote a post rather than an advert. Now that's going to be more important as you go along. Now Sport New Zealand, they do that when they do a post about a, you know a rugby event or whatever. They they pay for this. To get a bit more play, um, they you know they spent very little money, but it, it got got a big result, and and I I do go through that as an example at the end if that's if that's something that's valuable to you. I can go through the process of creating a Facebook advert and why it's really good and how how you can use it very well. And here look here, this this is the very thing I saw about get ten thousand fans. Do not do not <laughs> use that. It's really bad. Now this is another thing that's it's a trend that's really really brand new, but it's really going to become the future. Is that if you connect your American Express card to your Twitter account, you can buy stuff by tweeting. So completely, you know, so you can navigate in traditional methods of paying. Now, you know, th this is this is how far social media has become, and it's what social media is becoming is just. The, you know, the, the real world online in every sense. And, and so you've got to be a part of that. You've got to be a part of that in every way. The death of the viral. Now, um, do you know what viral videos are? You heard of them? Uh, all right, so there was, I, I wish I put it up here actually. There's, there's a, the perfect example was Cadbury's Chocolate filmed a guy in a gorilla suit playing the drums to Phil Collins or something like that. And they go like, Four gazillion views, but I don't. It didn't really add value to anyone's life other than give them a chapel. I'm not sure if it made Cadbury, you know, you know, didn't raise their profits by 20 percent or anything. And it wasn't even selling a specific product. It was just a viral video. Um, but videos now are not about just getting hundreds of millions of likes. They're about adding value to people's lives. Now I, I pick on a few people because they're, they're they're doing really well at, at things. And in the outdoor sphere, novels is good for <laughs> <laughs> I pick on novels because they just they're doing it right. You know, they, 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 novels is um, the national national outdoor leadership school, and these guys are winning at social media in every way whatsoever. So if you want to want to know how to do things well, can you turn the volume on my laptop? So no one's running out of the program, 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 program,
prepared for all of them. So this, this is a There's video a layering system because we were limited in the backcountry with what we can bring and we can't bring um, the entire cloth. And this is just shown through the YouTube. We want to have layers have that serve multiple we also purposes have, you know, that we can the, the either use individually or in conjunction so with other layers to fit weather conditions from hot. At the end, they, they push have the majority of rain gear from the most talk about for rain. Right. And they're missing a trick here. They, there's no in, in their other videos actually they do it really well. They're missing a trick here. What they don't do is put a link. Right? So with YouTube you can you can put links and text here right just using YouTube. Now so that means you don't need any specialist video editing software. You just need one of these. Just need a smartphone. So from from these you can um, you know, you can create a video, put it online, add captions and tags and everything, just right from the word go. So you, you know, you don't need a lot of equipment. You can be in the outdoors as long as you've got an internet connection. You can do it. So, um, so this is so they're adding value. They're you know they're teaching people stuff. They're giving them useful information. It's kind of, it's interesting. You know, so the the videos are you know added value. So that's that's a trend that's becoming more and more. Uh, prevalent in social media is, is uh, videos, videos I think that uh, Rich media is rising, now you might recognize some of them, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, YouTube, obviously. It's three of the big ones that I've there. Now this one over here, this is a really interesting one. So this, this is called Vine, um, as, a, as a Vine Vine, and it is started by Twitter. Um, and it's a new video sharing app, uh, six second videos. Uh, it's very clever. I have it here on my phone, so this works quite well. So, um, so here you can see, you just hold your thumb, and then you can take a six-second clip, and then it loops. That's how easy it is. And then you click next, and then you write a caption. You can add a location, so you can, if you're into location, um, social networks, that's good. I, I don't talk about that so much here because we're just talking about the basics. And then you can post to Facebook, Twitter, and Vine. Oh my God! Boom. Now, considering that um, video gets sucked so much play, that's a brilliant app, especially for outdoor recreation people. Definitely, like. You, you know, like, there's so many instances where a six second clip could add so much value. You know, you've just got all your kids off of a kayaking trip and they're all like thumbs up and smiles and you're like, have a good time, yeah, awesome, you know, six second clip, post that up, you just say, oh, we just had the kids from Mexico, whatever, you know, just having a great time. And that's, that's enough, you know, that's, and that's real value. Um, so this is, you know, Rich media is just a fancy term for, for videos and photos and interactive whatnot. Um, Pinterest is um, Pinterest is a big one. I mean, it's it's grown by two thousand percent in twenty twelve alone. Um, that is a big one to look at. But if you're not if you're not concrete in these three, this is no part of the top three. Just start with the start with these three first. But the others are, are important to look at. Um, Mobile. This is a kind of a convoluted quote. It's not the best quote, um, but it, it, it's, it's you know it's purposeful. We're going to execute this mission to make the world connected and build value over the long term. The big question that will define how we've done is how we do with mobile. What he's trying to say is is that if if they're successful with mobile, they're successful as a business going forward. So they're focusing everything on mobile. Um, the next, this slide actually shows a much reason why mobile is really important. So this, this is, this is us here, and that's mobile users overtaking desktop users. So there's more people accessing the internet on tablets and mobiles than there are anything else, and that will just continue to continue to, to increase. So if you don't have one of these, get one. That's what I'm saying, and it's it's just. It becomes more and more obvious throughout this presentation that you know you've got to think mobile. You've got to think mobile first, not just mobile as well, which is hard even for honest to do. 
you know, it's, I mean, we're, we're a small charity, but I don't think Doc will have any problems. <laughs> but, it, you know, you, there are lots of solutions to, to, um, to doing, to, to making yourselves relevant on mobile. So, um, one of the notes I have here, so, especially for local, for businesses that deal with local issues, um, half of searches, local searches, are via mobile. Now. People are searching on the move and using maps and whatnot. So if, if you're, you know, if your business is based on capturing local tourist people in the area, you know, that's something to think about. How are you, how are you making yourself known to those local tourists? How, you know, how, what, what, how are you linking your, your social media to the local networks? And I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, taking the offline online. Um, so this is a great example of um, Oreo and utilizing a, a bit of a disaster in the Super Bowl. I don't know if you heard, but during the Super Bowl, the power cut, and so they kind of made a joke about it, and, and they got 15,000 retweets. Again, this is it's just a, a light hearted to show you that connecting offline events online can um, can get you a lot of traction. Um, but here, this is this is. Um, uh, a rental car at the head of the route going. Um, and uh, you know, it's, they're saying, you know, here we are on Facebook and Twitter. And so you've, you've got to be thinking about when you're out and about, how are you uh, presenting yourself? How are you saying, this is how you can get a hold of them? So when people are taking photos and they're sharing them on Facebook, you know, their friends are seeing it. How, what, how are you taking advantage of that opportunity? How are you telling your, you know, your friends' friends your, you know, your clients' friends, that they can see you, you know, that they can find you in these networks. Um, so it's, you know, this, it's a, it's a big thing, you know. Here, um, so the bottom right here, that's the Pope's, the new Pope, unveiling. Now, five years ago, that was all candles, but that's thousands of smartphones, <laughs> right? So you're on the other side. You're, you're, you're being filmed. You know what are you what are you doing? What you know? What are you doing more than just a logo up here? Or what have you got? You know, if you're especially if you're a tourism operation, you know, what are you what are you putting here to say that you're on Facebook and Twitter that people can find out from there? Because they might see that photo on Facebook, and if they see the logo on Facebook, they might go, oh, that looks cool. Kayaking, eh? Kayaking New Zealand. I might I might check that out, and they'll look for you on Facebook. And, that, and that's a, a real thing now, that Facebook has become such a huge ecosystem that people are skipping Google together. They go on Facebook and they go, cheap rental car mountain? Anyone got some good chats? You know, people are asking for recommendations about restaurants, about, about everything. And that's through Twitter and Facebook and other social media. So what are you doing to, to capture that audience? And it's really important. See, so, so, so you know, um, hashtags are something that we'll talk about more. You know? it's like, the use of hashtags, um, you know, someone's someone sees a, a mate, um, you know, standing by the by the sign and you know a volcano in the background, and they go, "Cool, where's where's Tom Barrero? You know, how do I find out about that? You know, if, they, if if there's a hashtag there, then that then that what that tells them is that oh right, there's there's a subject on uh, Twitter or Instagram where if I look for Tom Barrero, I'll find all of, all this information. I can find out recommendations." And whatnot, and that's hashtags are, are really important. And you see them, you see them at the bottom of this Twitter hashtag for the Lunch show. And I'll talk a bit, a bit more about that in a practical sense. So we can that. This is so this is a brilliant. I, I actually went to chat um, last week, and I won a competition through Twitter. They said retweet this, and you might get a free meal for two. And I couldn't believe it when I did. And I thought. Well played, chat. Well played. <laughs> uh, and so I went to I went to chat, and this is at the reception, and they're saying, you know, this is how you can interact with us online and promote us online, and we'll give you some love back. So if you're on Facebook, um, there you go. So chat. So they have this hashtag chatgram, which uh, is, is you know they they created so that people can follow all of the photos on Instagram and, and Twitter. To do with, with chat, so they've created their own hashtag, which is very clever. They're obviously on Pinterest, so they, you know, that's really important. It's very clever, and it's it's not a small board too. It's like this size. 
Sorry? What does it mean? Is it just a frame? Is it frame? Is it like, I don't, uh, is it like a poster in there? Like I think so. I wouldn't frame this. It's, yeah. It, yeah, they put some money into that. Yeah, it's not just a little poster. So I'm quickly going to go through some case studies that might get you thinking. Um, for the tourists, the tourist operations, um, walking legends, now these guys are fantastic. Um, I'm a little biased because I know the owner of Rob Franklin, but um, they really, really do social media very well. So they got 2,800 likes. When you click here, you can see uh, that they're actually their most popular age group on Facebook, 45 to 54. Right? It's telling, isn't it? Right? Facebook's not about just young people, it's not at all. Um, so actually, this is actually quite low for them. Usually, so this is 115 people talking about it right now. Maybe they, maybe because it's getting towards the end of the summer and they're not doing so many walks and whatnot. Usually, this is around 10%. Now, if you're doing well, you should have about 10% of your likes talking about you. So if you're getting that, if you get, you know, if you're doing well on Facebook, that's a, that's a good metric. You know, 10% is pretty good. Um, that's about 5%, but um, yeah, usually, usually they're higher than that. Now, they, they utilize Facebook really well. They've got great calls to action. What they did here, so I see something that's different from, from the screenshot. Um, if you look here, they had two book it nows, right? So what I think they were doing was measuring which book it system was giving them the most return. And then they figured, right, well, it's this one. We'll get rid of the other one. That's really clever. That's, that's a brilliant use of Facebook and social media is testing out what platforms. And again, the 80-20 rule, and we talk about that more. When you're creating adverts through Google, when you're creating adverts through Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, have 10 variations, measure them all, and then wipe out the 80% that don't perform and leave the 20% that do. Or even, the one, or even if there's just one that's really performing. But that's, that's a really good rule. And Social media is a fantastic platform for testing these things out. So here they have um, a newsletter sign up. So um, some of you may run your newsletters through Mailchimp, which is a really great service. I think it's fantastic. There's not many services that beat it in terms of e-newsletters. And so this is still on the Facebook page, and you can sign up to the e-newsletter on Mailchimp to subscribe to. Subscribe to this. It's very good. Uh, well, Mailchimp, a lot of a lot of so, a lot of things like Mailchimp are, are very social media savvy. So they created a, an easy app that you can plug into your Facebook. It's really simple. If you've got a Mailchimp account, you just go to the share settings or whatever, and it says create your create your newsletter sign up. But I mean, even if you don't have Mailchimp, you you should be able to create an app that signs up to your e newsletter. Um, you know, as opposed to having to send people to your website. So you can do that really easily. Again, and here this is a really good, especially for especially for tourists. Um, you know, if you have any kind of tourist, it's TripAdvisor. So they click. These are their TripAdvisor reviews. You can click right there from Facebook, great portal um, to see what what reviews they've got. But the thing they do really fantastically is great photos. They've um, that's Rob there. He owns this business. He's, he's the man as a hat. Um, really lovely guy. Very passionate about his business. Um, is they, they take albums of all of their trips and then they invite their clients, they make sure that their clients like them on Facebook and they tag them uh, and that's a really good way of you know share getting getting exposure to their clients, friends, is getting having them tagged in the photos and becoming friends with them and whatnot. Um, and they do a really good job. They they've invested in a really good camera and um, so it takes really good photos. That's really important. Because it, it makes a hell of a difference. You take a photo on a crappy smartphone, whereas you take it on a you know professional camera, you're really selling the product a lot better. So that's important. They've invested in, in the right things. And then and up here, a lot of people um, don't do a good job of the about area because that's it only shows four lines, right? Uh, so you want to make sure that's that kind of like above the fold term. You want to make sure the above the fold information. Here is, is you know as, as well. They got well thought out. They got the calls, you know, the free form from Australia, which is obviously a huge, um, a few huge market for them. And they free form here and then to their website. 
Uh, the website's pretty good. I only have one criticism. Um, they, do, they do it very well. A really nice um, design website. And they only have their, have their events here, have their call to action here. I'd say, I'd say their call to actions are a bit low. You know, you want them to be higher. Um, also, these here. Um, these should, I personally think, your social network should be at the top of your website all the time, every page. People should know what network how to get to you. It should be, it shouldn't be buried on a page, halfway on the page, or about us or contact us. You just tell you all the buttons, but they, they mean a lot, right? You know, they, it's very important to have them up here, I think. Um, yeah, so they, they, so if you're in tourism, you, you can do worse than copying these guys. These guys are, are really doing it well. On Facebook, the company wants to tell you that it's a little bit different from the Facebook manager. Completely different. Completely different. Like, yes. So, share. And yeah. You can't share on the company one. What do you mean you can't share? Um, an article that a guy put up that I want to put the company on because he's a, uh, a guy. So the full of things that come from the company you can see what he's doing. Yeah. But I couldn't bring it across. I'll have to look at that specifically because there's any number of reasons why that is. But, um, I can put it into my pocket and private. I'm going to start with the quiz. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't get it into my company. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I, can, I can have a look there. It might be his. Own privacy settings. I mean, he, he might not allow people well, to share. I was uh, doing that great show in Australia. So right. I think about this 24th or something, so I was trying to generate some of them. I thought it would work so many. All right, well, we, if you remember that, we can look at that that issue at the end if you want to pick it up specifically. Um, so that's, so that's a, a good example of a, a tourist operator doing a great job. Um, again, nulls, like I said, they're, these guys are fantastic. Um, you can see here they've got many. So that's, I took that a few weeks, well, a month ago. Huh? So let's see where they're at now. Um, so nulls, up to, so they've grabbed another over 2,000 in the last month. They're doing something right. Uh, let's see how many. I would say so. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're international. They're not just in New Zealand. They're buying uh, them. Sorry? They're buying them. You sorry. reckon? <laughs> <laughs> um, so they got. So that's actually pretty low for them. I've seen that again. It must be the time of year. Um, they have a, a, a younger demographic. Um, usually that's around 3,000, 4,000. So it's quite quite for them at the moment. Um, so, so again, they they you can request a catalogue. You know, you can get an email to you, you can get that sent to you. Great call to action. And uh, they've got their, what events they're running, all their, their lists of videos. So this is great. It's my wife asking me how the workshop went. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Share your course photos with us. Um, yeah, it's great. There's, there's so many ways of getting content onto your page, getting to people to engage with you, encourage you. You know, having small little giveaways for people to, to post stuff on your page, really easy. Um, so they, you know, putting some text and some photos, it helps if you have a really good graphic designer, which we do. Put your hand up, Jim. How many should we, people should we be expecting to get likes, you know, we're four years old and doing Facebook for six months? Yeah. What, you know, a small company, what, what should we be expecting? There's no, there's no, there's no answer. It's, it, it really depends. I mean, walking legends are, are basically a couple. It's two people, and they've got you know 2,600, and they've not been going that long. Um, it's just about the passion, and it's like everything else. I mean, I think people look at the internet and social media as a silver bullet, or as I said it and forget it. You know, it, it, it's it's not that at all. You know, it's, you put you get as much out of it as you put in. And so when people throw up a Facebook page and then post it once a week and then start complaining it's not doing anything for them, you know, it's it's like opening a shop 
selling two products and not telling anyone about it. It's a complete waste of time and money. So it, it's, it's what you make of it. You know? right. Yeah, you you reach it. You reach a you you get to a point. You get to a tipping point where you know you just suddenly you know, you're getting lots and lots of traction, and that's different for different organisations. I'm we're a national organisation. We're a charity. Um, we're trying to make our presence a little less dry. You know, before it was very dry. We're kind of you know small, cliquey, clubby kind of thing, and now we're trying to be a bit more open and personal, um, and that makes it easier to like us. Um, so it's 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 really depends on the on the brand, you know, and that's that's a branding issue you know, as much as anything else. Yeah. yeah. So um, Knowles Knowles is a really good one, uh, doing very well again. You can you know look at them and see what they're doing to to you know, see what they're doing. And actually, I'll just skip right across to, to Girl Guides. Now I, I love Girl Guides. Um, they're very new. They only came on to Facebook in 2012. Already got 2,300 likes. Um, they, they're, you know, if you're involved with children, um, they have outdoor education centers and whatnot. If you're involved with them, this is a really, they, they've 